Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm just gonna walk you through my YouTube setup, my little studio, my little temporary studio that I put together in the unfinished part of my basement. Maybe something in here will help spark some creativity for you to put together your own studio and start making your own videos, your own YouTube videos, whatever that might look like. So I'm just gonna give you a little tour, show you some of the things I use, and yeah, hopefully it sparks some interest. So let's go. And as always, if you're new here, my name is Caleb and I've been doing freelance video production since 2012. And this channel is to help you make your own videos, whether you just started or you've been making them for a while, whether you use the GH5 or any other camera, if that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also at any point during this video, comment below some of your favorite pieces of gear that you use in your studio if you have one. I think the bigger list that we have down there and the more things we have down there, the more it's gonna help out this community. So comment below some of the things that you use in your studio, some of your favorite parts and some of your favorite pieces of gear. Now, my studio is definitely nothing fancy. Um, it's temporary because it's in the unfinished part of our basement and we are gonna be finishing this part of the basement soon but it gets the job done and I really like the setup. So I'll just walk you through some of the parts that I use. There's really, you know, three main parts being the camera lights and audio, but then a couple other things tossed in there to kind of help get tripods off the floor and get things off the floor. So that I'm not using up so much floor space in our basement. So let's take a look through here. I'll show you. Okay, so here's the outside part of the studio. And you can see that I just kind of separated the studio space from the larger unfinished part of our basement with some sound blankets, which are, these are just moving blankets, but they serve, you know, just like sound blankets. So this part of our basement is not done. It's a play area for our kids. And so it's like, a, you know, like a Nerf gun war zone in a Lego construction site. But these sound blankets just kind of provide a spot to um, just kind of separate the studio a little bit, but also dampen the sound from the echo of this open basement. So I'm just gonna open up the sound blankets here. And then right here is the main light, main key light. And for that, I use the Aperture 120D and obviously the light dome. The great thing about this light dome, well, first of all, it's huge. I could probably be using a light dome mini on this, but the great thing about the light dome is you have that grid right on the front, which I'll show you in just a sec, but it allows you to kind of direct the light a little bit and it doesn't spread out so much. So then right here is the GH5 that I shoot all my videos with. And on top, I use the video micro just to get a scratch track to sync up audio, which I record on a separate device. I'll show you in just a sec, but um, I don't use any tripods. Like, like on this Aperture 120D, normally you'd have that on like a C stand, but I don't want any stands on the ground uh, because, you know, my boys are running around down here. Like I said, it's a Nerf gun war zone, so they're running around and it just kind of creates a little bit more space for them. But also because it's such a tight area, it allows me to fit a few more things in here that I probably wouldn't be able to normally fit. Okay, so with the GH5, I have it mounted to this wooden pole that is a support beam for our second floor. And it being able to just screw right into this beam, I can get that tripod off the ground, but this is really a, a like a articulating arm for security cameras, but it's solid enough here, let me get a light on it. There you go. But it's solid enough to hold up the GH5 and a microphone and the heavy Sigma 18 to 35 that I have on there. So um, this arm built for security cameras really does the job. And sometimes I have to use these vice grips to tighten it up just to make sure it's tightened because I can't tighten it as much as I want to with hand, with my hand. So I use the vice grip to do that. And then to monitor myself, and I'm gonna flip around here, but I use the small HD seven inch, and I have that mounted to this post as well with an articulating arm. And so if I need to make some adjustments on the placement of the camera or the monitor, I can definitely do that. So let's flip around to the other side and I'll show you what I've got going on there. Actually, before I do that, I wanted to show you how, a, how I have this 120D mounted up here. Um, I just put a support beam up here, support piece of wood up here, two by four, and I've got the mount and then it lighted the 120D upside down to that mount. And now I also have some Velcro strips, strips on here so that it just kind of secures it a little bit more. You know, I'm 
kind of wary that it might come loose. I mean, it's tight and everything, but you know, Velcro strips kind of help out. Um, and so it hangs upside down, but it serves a purpose. This Aperture 120D is probably one of the best lights that you can get for um, talking head or really lighting up anything, but talking head especially, it's such a soft interview light. Um, I absolutely love it and I highly recommend the Aperture 120D. Okay, so really the only thing that I have different in this studio area is I have the this photo deox, this flapjack light up that I wouldn't normally have, but that's just to kind of light everything over here to, to show you. So um, let me just run through the front side. Again, I'm gonna turn this light on, but I'm just gonna run you through the front side of the setup here. So. Here, like I was saying, I've got the GH5, and basically for all talking headshots, I'm using the Sigma 18 to 35. I love the depth of field at 1.3 with the Metabone Speed Booster. I just feel like it gives such a great talking head depth of field. I think it looks really good. Um, then, you know, the mic up there. So here's some of my settings that I use for um, on the camera. I don't know if I can zoom in there enough, but I'm pretty much always at, I'm pretty much always at ISO 200. I shoot in 4K 24, um, usually 8-bit because I don't wanna have to deal, speed-wise, I don't wanna have to deal with 10-bit files. Um, and then I shoot at a shutter angle of one, 180, then an aperture of 1.3. Now, one of the most important things that you're gonna want when shooting interviews is this filter that I have on this camera right here. And this filter is the Tiffin Black Pro Mist. And if I can get it off, Black Pro Mist an eighth. Let me uh, focus in so you can see it. So this filter right here is definitely something you're gonna wanna invest in for talking heads because it's gonna soften up the image and it's gonna give you um, it's gonna give you like a, a highlight roll off. So it just makes the highlights look a little bit softer. Um, so if you're doing client work or if you're doing your own YouTube videos, you'll definitely want to invest in one of those uh, Pro Mist filters. They are probably one of my favorite pieces of gear for any lens. All right, again, here's the front side of the Aperture 120D with the grid on it. Um, some people don't use the grids. I personally like the grid because I feel like it it just kind of cuts down on the spreading of the light. And so you can really kind of focus in the light. All right, so then I've got the GH5 connected to the small HD. It's a seven inch. Um, right now I've got it, I've got this light on it. So it's kind of, let me darken this up a little bit. There, I turned my camera light off but I've got it set so I can see exposure and um, things are pretty dark in here right now, but I can also monitor it that way. As you can see, me on camera, awkward. So I kind of monitor myself that way because the small screen um, is sometimes a little difficult to see yourself. So if you have, um, an option to monitor yourself with one of these, it really helps out. Here's a control panel for the Aperture 120D. Um, usually I keep mine right around 60%. And that's the nice thing about having a studio like this is that you can kind of set it, keep everything the same, and you're ready to roll once you hit record. So you just kind of set your lights up, how you want it, keep them there, keep your settings on your camera and then you're ready to roll for the next time that you want to shoot your studio talking head or whatever else you're doing in the studio. Um, okay, let's talk about audio a little bit. Now, I record basically right into this Zoom H6, which is a great recording device. And you know what? It comes with different attachments and it has the shotgun attachment. And so I just use that for my talking head videos. I give a little clap, so I'll be able to sync up my audio in post. But I find that this microphone for the setup that I have 
and for what I'm doing right now, works really well. But this Zoom H6 is a great recording device, and I highly recommend recording into that because you can control the input, the audio that's coming in. You got these little dials. If you're using a separate uh, microphone, you can bring it in right there. And then to monitor it, I use these Sony studio monitors that basically almost everyone uses. Um, they're awesome to monitor the sound. You can really hear things that are coming in. So let me scoot back a little bit and I'll just kind of show you the setup um, from a distance. See if I can widen out here. So that's where I'd be sitting, just kind of right here facing the camera. And that's, that's the basic setup that I have for my talking heads. H6, I have on a, a ball head that's on the arm extension, kind of like, you know, you'd have for like a podcast setup. And again, I just attached it to this pole. This pole makes it so easy to screw things into. Um, and I have the control panel for this Aperture 120D, a, just a regular coat hook that I just screwed in there. It just hangs. See, like I said, nothing overly exciting, but it does the job and it helps out tremendously. All right, one of the things I did want to show you is I actually kind of sit at an angle when I'm filming my videos. So when I'm filming, I will face this way and turn my head towards the camera. So my body will be facing the light, but I will turn and face the camera because I feel like sitting at a little bit of an angle is just a little bit more, I don't know if you want to say flattering angle rather than sitting straight on to the camera. I know a lot of people sit straight on and that's totally fine. Um, it's just something that I don't do. I like being angled a little bit and then my head faces the camera. So if, you'll, if you go back and watch some of my other videos, you'll see me um, from that angle, you'll see my body facing the light, my face angling at the camera. So here's my um, MacBook Pro, my 16 inch MacBook Pro that um, I do all my editing on right now. But also I like having this on the desk when I shoot videos just to um, go through my notes and I can take a peek down there and um, see what I need to say next. Like this video that I'm shooting right now, showing you everything is pretty sloppy because I don't really have a whole lot of notes. <laughs> it kind of is what it is. All right, let's take a look at the background here a little bit. And like I said, this flapjack light, I don't normally have on. That's just kind of to let the, this shine light onto this scene right here. But in the background, I've got a hair light up here and that's just a battery powered hair light. Nothing special about it. It's cheap on Amazon. And like I said, I don't have any C stands out in the open area, but I do have stands back here. And this just kind of brings the light up so that it shines perfectly down on the back of me and it gives me a hair light. So this guitar is actually the very first guitar that I ever got. My parents gave it to me as a birthday gift, I believe, birthday or Christmas. But I want that to be in the background. It's an old classical string. It's actually missing a string right now. Um, but you can't tell that, especially with the depth of field of the 18 to 35 Sigma. Um, I like having a little yellow light in the background just to kind of light up the scene, kind of separate me from the background a little bit. And if I want to, I also have a DJ light down here that I can shine like a separate color up on there and it makes it easy to, you know, change the color if I want to change the color, if I want to add a different color. But I feel like a lot of times with having those neon or, you know, those LED lights in the background is kind of like, more techie and I'm not necessarily a techie channel. Um, but every once in a while, it's nice to have some color in the background. One of the things I do have though, is I do color up this with a DJ light. This is the kind of the storage closet, um, with all my gear and I color that up. Cause I don't want it to be, be totally dark in there. So having a light kind of show up there just adds a little touch of color and you'll kind of notice that off to the back of the scene. So that basically is my studio. So like I said, sound blanket, here's a normal blanket that I have up here, but it'll dampen the sound coming down. One thing that 
I am looking at changing in the near future is actually putting something on the desk because I feel like I'm getting a little bit of an echo off the desk when it comes to audio. Right now I can deal with that, I'm fine with it, but probably putting something like a towel or a light blanket on the desk would cut down even more on some of that audio echo or reverb. In all reality, these blankets here, they really separate this space from the rest of the open basement, cuts down on the echo, cuts down on the reverb, and, and does a pretty good job. So what I'm gonna do is turn this guy off. We'll sit down, I'll show you the studio shot from the regular angle, and we'll do a little sign off. All right, so here's what you'd see on a regular basis, pretty much for all my talking head videos. And like I said, the studio is nothing fancy, but it gets the job done, and I think I get some pretty good results from it, from what I can tell. And please, don't forget to comment below some of your favorite parts about your studio, some of the gear that you use. I think it would help out the community to get as much information down there as possible. That way we know what you're using, what's working, and what's not working for you. And as always, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.